Hello and welcome to another Howlu Sees It uh, video review and I am continuing my stocking stuffer series uh, as you can see here I now have a uh, stocking here stuffed with the game that I will be reviewing this evening Pixel Tactics and Pixel Tactics 2 as you can see they fit very nicely in there uh, very slim small boxes here that will be able to fit into a nice Christmas stocking. So let's go ahead and take a look at the games here. I have the instructions all laid out in front of you. Uh, it's all folded up in that tiny little box. As you can see there are some nice uh, visual illustrations and diagrams and yet there's still a lot of words uh, associated with the game. Uh, understanding the basic concept of the game uh, is, is very easy. It's a very pretty simple uh, concept to the game, uh, but as you get into all of the cards and what each card does, you may run into a, a lot of questions as far as uh, certain situations and everything like that. But the instructions uh, themselves are very good as far as the basic uh, gameplay and how the game uh, works out. So uh, if you flip the instructions over, uh, what you have here is a, a mat that uh, you can utilize to uh, play the game on. It kind of helps you just kind of keep track of uh, what's what. I uh, highly recommend using this for at least the first time that you play. It's not necessary for the game and, uh, you know, can, I, I wouldn't say burdensome, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's just easier just to pull out the deck of cards and play it like that. So it's not necessary, but it is kind of a, a nice thing, especially as you are getting started uh, to keep track of the different names uh, as the front row is the vanguard, the flank, and then you have your rear, uh, where to place your leader, keep track of, you know, what's your deck, what's your discard. It does have a reference uh, card there uh, as well seeing what actions you can take but so there's the player mat um, what else uh, you find in the game is uh, two decks uh, identical decks so each uh, player will utilize uh, and have start a deck that has uh, the exact same uh, you know heroes as the other player uh, the game also includes uh, some action reference cards that uh, double as uh, t you know cards to keep track of who's the first player and who's the second player uh, for that wave. Uh, it does also include a card for each uh, team here that uh, you can uh, make up your own uh, character. So that's kind of fun. Uh, you also have a few cardboard uh, cutout tokens here to keep track of damage uh, to your units, to your players. Uh, double sided for you know ones on one side, threes on the other, and then you have some larger you know 10, 20 uh, tokens. So that's what you'll find in the box and uh, the basic gameplay of the game and what the the game really uh, is based around are these uh, different cards and what's really really cool about pixel tactics is the amazing replayability and amazing variability for choosing how you want to utilize the cards in your deck so yes each person has the same uh, you know different the same cards in their deck as the other player but, as you can see, there's all sorts of different options that the player could uh, choose to play the card. So at the beginning of the game, though, people are dealt, uh, each person is dealt five cards. And from that, they're going to choose the leader. So they'll turn their card upside down so that they can look at their leader ability. Now, uh, Lestandra uh, here is... Uh, has a special ability here. Recruiting is a free action for you. And so that uh, is 
pretty handy actually because each turn each player is has two actions that they can take and recruiting would be a free action so that they would be able to do that uh, for free on uh, each wave so uh, again this uh, represents the damage that that leader would be able to perform in a melee uh, attack there and the amount of hit points or defense uh, hit points that they have available as well uh, the goal of the game is to destroy uh, and get as many damage points equal to or greater than your opponent's uh, hit point value there. So after each person secretly chooses that, they'll put a face down and reveal it at the same time. If they chose the same leader, just to keep the game a little bit different, uh, it suggests that you go ahead and uh, you know discard that and choose again. Uh, so that's one aspect that the card can be played and chosen to be played as is the leader. But if you flip it around throughout the game, you're going to be placing these cards either around, you're going to place them around your leader in the different positions. You may place them in the flank, the vanguard, or the rear. And uh, according to where you place them, they have different abilities. So this is a summoner and it will have two uh, for attack and five uh, hit points and as you can see it changes what it does in each of those rows attack uh, return a hero in melee to its owner's hand so instead of you can you can utilize this and just attack another uh, you know opponent's hero uh, if it's in this row melee means you know it's available you know the first unit in each of these columns here you'd be able to go ahead and attack that person uh, you'd be able to attack them and apply to uh, hip you know to damage well instead of doing that you could utilize these this cards special attack and you could just return the hero to the opponent's hand if it's in the uh, flank here you would be able to recruit a hero into any row in your unit uh, so that's pretty handy. Uh, the last one here, attack, draw three cards, put one in your hand, one back on top of the deck, and discard one. So very, very cool as far as it changes throughout the game on, you know, it may be here later on in the game. You may choose to move it into a vanguard position later. Um, the other aspect of each card is you can see this one type kind of uh, use in purple. So if you don't want to place the card uh, in uh, any of your rows, you can use this one time ability. Uh, this one, name a card, search for, uh, search your deck for it. If you find it, place it in your hand, reshuffle your deck. So there's a lot of things going on. It does have some iconology here. Uh, that helps you kind of keep track of what each card does. But uh, one of the greatest strengths of this game is one of its greatest weaknesses as well as far as getting into the game. Uh, your very first games are going to be uh, and take a lot longer uh, than your later games just because there's so many different uh, cards in here and so many different ways to play each card. So you're going to be, after choosing your leader, uh, which really can change you know, the strategy of that whole entire game based around your leader, uh, you're gonna have a card, you know, five cards in your hand, and you're gonna be looking at this and being, okay, what is the best possible way that I can utilize this card? And you're going to have to look at this and review each one and read through it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with these cards. So there's definitely a big learning curve uh, to start out the game because you're going to be reading these and you know none of these really icon icons were on the last card that we had. So you're going to have to read through each of these and as you're going through the game, even as you have these you know laid out uh, in your field uh, like so, each uh, time it comes around again, you may have to uh, reread all of your cards and know what it, what other actions you have. And not only do you have to keep track of, 
you know, your cards and what they do, but your opponent's going to have a bunch of cards over there, and they may have a different abilities so that you may have to keep, try to keep track of their cards and say, you know, this, they may have a card here that has an intercept, which means, you know, I can't do a ranged attack, which usually I'd be able to, you know, attack a rear person. But if they have an intercept card here, they would, I would un, be unable to do that. And it's just, there seems like there's a lot to keep track of. Now, as you get used to the cards and more familiar with them, uh, that will flow a lot uh, quicker. But it really is fun to see all the amazing different possibilities associated with these cards and what you can do with them. So, very, very cool. There's a lot of different options uh, that are out there on how to utilize the card. Um, randomly take a card from your opponent's hand, use its order effect, and then discard it. So this is their order effect. You're just going to uh, steal that card and use it, so they wouldn't be able to utilize that card, and you get to utilize it. And then again, each leader is different here. Uh, when an opponent uses a melee attack, you decide which legal target he attacks. So that's pretty cool. They're going to be trying to attack certain players, and you can misdirect them to someone else. So just a ton of replayability in this game and variability as far as what can be done. Uh, the game length uh, at times can be lengthy, and again, especially as you get started. Um, that will quicken as you get more familiar with the cards, but uh, there are cards uh, that can heal players, so some of the games can kind of turn to be a little uh, drawn out, uh, in in my opinion. But it, it is, you know, you're having so much fun uh, with the game at times that, you know, that's not really going to be an issue for you. But the game length can get... Uh, lengthy in certain situations but uh, as you go along you you know uh, your turn uh, you'll have the first player uh, utilize lay cards into the vanguard or attack from this uh, position then your opponent will have the chance then it will go to the flank utilize the abilities here uh, you can't use uh, usually uh, unless uh, on the card uh, cards more than once uh, per that turn but then some of the abilities here will be able to say you know attack using this card and then utilize another attack so uh, then you'll come to the rear then you'll switch uh, first and second player and start again uh, as soon as uh, the uh, an opponent uh, defeats uh, your uh, you know leader or you defeat theirs that winner of that round would be able to keep these two cards, uh, put them aside face down as a trophy, and you can play best out of uh, you know five, best out of three different types of games. So you can't change the length as far as how many times you want to play, um, but very very fun game. Uh, the the quality of the cards are are very nice, uh, and as I said, there's just so much variability and so much thought into uh, you know, put into figuring out and having all of these different uh, components and uh, ways that you can use the card. Um, let's take another look at this one here, a trapper. Uh, so he has the intercept ability that uh, I was talking about, uh, where uh, if he's in the front of the column, uh, People with ranged attacks would not be able to damage the units behind him. Uh, and this one's pretty cool because he also takes no damage from the ranged attacks. So uh, the opponent would have to use melee attacks uh, to, uh, you know, get rid of the card. Um, in the other position, in the flank, he would be a forerunner, uh, which is the person in front of him uh, has intercept. So it kind of inherits that ability. Uh, supporter, which is the person behind him, has ranged attack. So this is, you know, a really a neat card as far as changing the ability of the components uh, and the different characters around it. 
but then again it's something to keep track of if that makes sense there's you're gonna have to keep track of that ability and make sure that it's there you know sometimes you may forget that you have that ability um, it kind of happened as I, I did my first run through um, less <laughs> less often as you get more familiar with the cards um, in the rear he would be able the opponent must discard a card at random so that's and be able to get rid of those cards or this person's order ability or one-time discard ability is the opponent must discard three cards at random so then the other thing that you have to think about too is for whatever leader you choose um, you aren't going to have that card in your deck for following games so you know at the end of the game you take your leader and the opponent's leader whoever won would obtain both of those cards and they would not be available to you later in the other games so again tons and tons of replayability uh, the concept of the cards and what each of all the abilities are are really really fascinating um, and I really really enjoy it um, I just there's kind of a a learning curve that you have to get over uh, to uh, enjoy the game fully in my opinion um, but again there's just so much uh, so many different things that you can do with the cards uh, that it really makes the game enjoyable um, the pixel tactics too when you open up the package uh, I mean basically the same components there again you have the tracker cards, you have damage tokens, the instruction booklet that turns out into uh, the mat. Uh, the, the only difference is the cards that make it up. So if, once you get all of those cards down from the first one, or you know this is a standalone game, uh, you can come to these and e add even more variability to your deck. Add more leaders, add more strategy. So a lot of uh, wonderful uh, again uh, really interesting uh, actions and things that you can take but it's going to be a learning curve for you as far as you know how do I use this card uh, remembering what it does as you play the game um, here's a werewolf uh, make a melee attack then take another action uh, attack a hero uh, in your vanguard makes a melee attack and then take another action uh, defeat this hero and another hero so it's just again tons and tons of cards uh, if you can find the promo cards uh, online somewhere they have some really cool ones here too here's Tom Vassell uh, and he has a kind of interesting ability here at the end of each wave you roll two d6s and if your roll equals the number of corpses in your opponent's unit route to the opposing unit which means basically you win that round when you route to the opposing unit uh, so very very uh, kind of cool uh, promo cards there's some here that are just leaders uh, that are kind of special there uh, some cool artwork on that so that's that's basically the game. I know I didn't really get into, you know, the nitty gritty of the game and how it's played, but uh, you know, as the different actions, you basically either get to draw cards from your deck, uh, play them to the board uh, according to what wave, you know, on the first, second, or third wave that you're playing. Uh, you, uh, as uh, people, uh, get. Uh, people die you turn them over they're a corpse and you have to utilize actions to clear those off the board so that you can then play uh, more cards back onto your board and there's some leaders that you can actually utilize the corpse uh, as and then use them to attack or intercept things so there's lots of very cool things with pixel tactics I'm very impressed with the thought and process that went into uh, coming up with all the different actions uh, and the very sim simple, basic, simple concept of the game, um, and then just expanding on it. So, uh, Pixel Tactics, a great uh, two player uh, fighting game here. 
uh, very well done, uh, but don't get discouraged as you get started into the game. Uh, there's definitely a big learning curve associated with keeping track of everything. Uh, the game lengths might be a little long as you get started, uh, but it's very, very, very fun game. Uh, go ahead and check out Pixel Tactics.